to the house of God this morning. We are very excited to worship with you, whether you're here in the building or at home. Let's give them our love this morning.
enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul.
sung not seem the right word for a past tense sing anyways I sang <laughs> the word shame instead of I'm not afraid I said I'm not ashamed anymore and I just feel like going back to that for us you know a lot of times we go through our life and we're living out of a place of trauma and a shame responding to that trauma and today I just want us all to remember that who the sun sets free is free indeed. We're not living out of shame anymore. We're not living out of a place of fear or self-loathing because we are the sons and daughters of a living God, the living God. So we sing that a couple more times and just let it sink in. He has been good to us. Oh, yeah. He'll see me through like before. He is Lord. Yeah, He is Lord. I'm not ashamed anymore. He is Lord. Let it wash over you. He is Lord. He'll see. just thank you today for your goodness and your grace and how it washes over us God. how it cleanses us God how it frees us and Lord today as we as we continue in your presence let us be reminded that we are your sons and your daughters and there is no shame in this place you love us exactly how we are. And that goodness towards us causes us a change of heart. It causes us to want to grow in you. And we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hey, listen, I know that, you know, we're, we're dealing with COVID and all this stuff, but why don't you just turn to two or three people, give them an elbow or something, welcome them to City View Church, and we'll be back here in just a few minutes.
Well, good morning, City View Church. Hey, we are so excited that you're with us today. Thank you so much for being a part of today's service. Today we have a, a special guest with us that I have the, the privilege of just, um, well, just asking a few questions, interviewing about the ministry that he's involved in, he leads. And so I'm going to ask Joey to come on up here from San Diego Christian Servicemen, and he's a part of our church and uh, just a great, a great man of God and leads an incredible ministry that happens the third Saturday of every single month. He's going to come and share with us about uh, just a few, uh, just how we can get involved in the ministry and all that. But anyway, this is Joey. Everybody say hi, Joey. <laughs> so, how y'all doing? All right. Hey, so Joey, tell us a little bit about uh, San Diego Christian Servicemen and uh, what you guys do. Well, uh, San Diego Christian Servicemen Center has been around since the 40s. Wow. I became the director in uh, 2006, and that's a little longer story than I have time here today. The treasure bag event started in 2011 at Military Housing, and uh, we couldn't give it away. Wow. Nobody wanted the food. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Anyways, uh, now we, we're giving away about uh, 75 bags a month. We did that last, wow. just this uh, past uh, weekend. Awesome. But our primary mission, our primary calling is to share the gospel. I mean, you can take the food away, you can take all that stuff away. If we're not sharing the gospel, we're not doing what we're called to do. Absolutely. So um, about how many families do you guys, I mean, I know you said you gave away 75 bags. But right. How many people does that feed on any given week? How long does that last? Wow. That depends if you have teenagers or not. Well, that's true. Uh, I have two of I them. I think so. teenagers would be about 40 minutes, but... Uh, <laughs> A uh, fa family of four, that food, is, I've heard them make it last two weeks, but we figure about five to seven days. Okay. All right. And then so as you can look up on the screen, you're seeing pictures. Um, and here's the thing, like you're not just getting just box foods. I mean, there's some box foods in there, but you're getting some quality stuff, right? Yep. Chicken, uh, beef, pork, fish, and a breakfast meat like bacon or sausage. I, I remember one Saturday I went walking by. And he's like, Pastor, look at man, we got ribeyes here. I'm like, what? I, I want one of those, you know. I mean, <laughs> he didn't give me one, but anyway, uh, anyway, I mean, ribeye steaks. I mean, pork. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, prime prime ribs and stuff. So, good, just quality stuff that you're you're giving away. Yeah, that that, that was a blessing from the Lord. That was the first time we ever gave prime about. I mean, uh, you know how much that stuff goes for. It's uh, arm, a leg, and your firstborn for that thing. And All right. And we were able to do it uh, for uh, 50 families. Wow. Hallelujah. So what is this right here? What do you have for us? Okay, this here is a, a bag that every military family gets uh, filled with the meat. They don't have to go around and pick their own. We have a, a bunch of volunteers, and my wife kind of organizes all that stuff in the back. Helps me out a lot. Eva, if you would kind of stand, if it's okay. It's my wife over there. You know. <laughs> So uh, it's a big load that she takes off, and uh, we've got volunteers from the military community. They come and they help put it together. Uh, they let me know what's going on and the concerns that, that are happening, and I, I just take it from there. Sure. So you're talking about volunteers. What about people from our church? Can they get involved in helping you as well? Absolutely. Come on down. It's fun. All right, yeah. so uh, how would they get involved and when would they come? I already said the third Saturday, but... Yeah, the third Saturday, third Saturday month is an ideal time to come if you want to come and get to know these military families one-on-one, -on -one, get to talk to them. Maybe you want to set up a little table and pray with them. Uh, whatever you want to do, whatever God puts on your heart, All I'm right. good. All right, so then um, you have, a, you have a, a, a swag booth, you said earlier. Yeah, right? a little outside. swag booth. You know, we, right. got, so we got a few uh, shirts to give away. Some of these things to give away, uh, information on how to support us, uh, you know, like they say up here, uh, the gospel's free, but mil uh, ministry is a little expensive. Uh, so it's, it's very expensive. Yeah, it, it is. So. I mean, if you've seen the cost of food lately, uh, we budget $35 for a bag, and uh, it takes a lot of talking to Vons to get it down to that. But if you've gone out and tried to purchase, you know, four types of meat, you're, you're talking some serious change there. Right. All right. Well, then, how can we pray for you guys today and going out just throughout the month and throughout the year? 
Well, first of all, let's pray for our military families. They, they struggle a lot. I want you to think about this. You know, if you guys would close your eyes just for a minute and imagine yourself being a, a service member deployed for seven months and you get a, uh, well, I would say a letter back then, but now I guess it'd be a message from your spouse saying, you know, uh, hope everything's going well. I'm thinking about you a lot. I didn't want to burden with you, but this has been going on for a couple of months now. Car's broken down. Kids need braces. We ain't got no money in the account. That's, uh, excuse me, that's more than a national security issue. That shouldn't be happening. So what we do is we step in the gap. And that bag of for groceries allows us not only to share the gospel with our troops and their families, but it meets a need. Is it? All right. So, yeah, yeah. So if you want to get involved uh, with Joey and Christian servicemen and just be here, it's the third Saturday of every, of every month right here at City View Church. It's outside, so it's, it's totally safe and good. But, man, you heard from this man's heart today about his love for this ministry and, and all that they do. And you might think, you know, it's just a bag of groceries. But as you heard him say, it meets a need. And not only that, it allows them to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that right there, folks, is worth it all. So uh, I tell you, we're going to pray for you, bro. But here's the thing. If you would like to support this ministry, here's what you can do. You can go online to cityusd.com. You can uh, follow the giving tabs there. Christian servicemen, if it's not up, it'll be up a little bit later today. And then also, if you want to give today, you can also just uh, put in uh, just put in an envelope. Just mark Christian servicemen, the amount you want to give. We'll make sure it goes directly to the ministry. We don't take anything out for ourselves. We make sure it all goes to the ministry that we designate, and, and we are supporting this ministry. I'm telling you this right here, and I say this about a lot of missionaries is because I know them, and I know that this is good, good soil or, uh, to, for us to, to plant in. And so we're planting in this ministry. We're believing it. Not only that, we're backing it, and the, we're going to we're going to pray for you, and we're not only that, we're going to support you, brother. So let me pray. Father, we thank you so much for Joey, his team. Lord, I pray for our, our church congregants, Lord, that Lord, that we would just surround this, this man, this ministry in prayer. Lord, not only that, we would support him in finances, God. But, Lord, we pray every third Saturday, Lord, and even more than that, this, this, this man's involved. I know he is. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you would, Lord, just your Holy Spirit would just give him wisdom. Lord, uh, I pray that you continue to anoint him as he shares your word, God. I pray, Father, that, Lord, more families, more and more families would come. And, Lord, that the finances would open up so he could buy more, Lord, and, and negotiate better. Lord, I pray, Lord, for, for uh, just warehouses to say, you know, we have this free food. Come and get it. Lord, whatever it is, whatever it takes, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would open the door. And, Lord, we pray that many servicemen, Lord, and their families would come to know you through this ministry. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, and we're honored, Lord, to serve you in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joey. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you, church, if you haven't had a chance to even check it out on the third Thursday of every month. I think it's, it starts at 12? Third Saturday. Third Saturday. It starts at what time? 12. 12 o'clock. Um, there are lines of people. Um, from the military that, that are so thankful for this opportunity. And it's a huge opportunity of evangelism to just be Jesus with skin onto these families, to get to know them, to get to know their kids. Uh, they come from all different backgrounds and all different lifestyles. And some of them, you know, have attended this church and they, st they come to this church and some of them have never been to this church. They've never been to the programs of this church. And we're talking about standards and behaviors this uh, day. And I want to encourage you, whether you give or whether you pray or whether you participate, there's something for all of us to be a part. How many of you know that we have the greatest military in the universe, in the world, amen? And we're thankful for them. 
And of course, we're in a military town. And of course, um, I want to encourage you that today, of course, there's a several things that are going on besides playoffs and wild cards and all that stuff and lions and tigers and bears on my. But I want to encourage you that today is the Sanctity of Life Sunday. And this is a day where we pray for life. We pray for life. Uh, you know, I'm an example of that. I mean, I, my parents could have had an abortion on me, but they, my mom said no. She felt God say no, don't destroy this child because I'm going to use it for my glory. And she was on the table getting ready to do the whole nine yards. But God protected me by his grace. And so I want to encourage you to pray for life. Pray for the Supreme Court. Pray for the decisions that are being made. God have mercy on our nation. And today, of course, as we're continuing our day, 21 days of prayer, today we are praying for our, our nation. Would you join me right now in prayer as we pray for the United States of America? Father, we thank you for today. Lord, your word says that if we humble ourselves and that if we ask for forgiveness, that you will not only hear us, but you will cleanse us and you will heal our land, Lord. And there are so much areas of our land that needs healing, Lord God. And as we think about life, we know that there's circumstances and there's situations that, that where people have, have, have maybe even had an abortion or have gone through that thing or, or helped someone get one or whatever it may be, Lord Jesus. And so we know that in, through Christ Jesus there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But God, we're living in a day and age where we need to stand for life. We need to stand for the unborn, Lord God. And so today, Lord Jesus, we pray for mothers that are making decisions, Lord God, today, and couples that are making decisions, Lord, that maybe they would give it up for adoption or they would do something else, Lord God. But Lord, we pray for life. There's so many children that, Lord God, you want to use for your glory and your honor. And we know that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so, Father, we pray for our, our president, our vice president, the cabinet, Lord, our senate, our congress, Lord God. We pray that they would come to know you and make you you known, Lord Jesus. We pray that the, that the fear of the Lord would be the beginning of wisdom in our, in our nation, Lord God, in our hearts. Lord, stir us up as your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know the way, the truth, and life, and that is you, Lord God. So help us to share that good news, Lord God. I thank you that your church is alive. It's vibrant. It is not dead, Lord God, and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, Lord Jesus, use us for your glory and your honor, Lord God. Help us to be salt and light, Lord God, like never before. And Lord, we thank you that we are one nation under God. Forgive us for the times that we've tried to be over you and over your will and over your ways, Lord God. But Lord, as we lead a life of repentance, of changing our ways, Lord God, and our customs and our behaviors, Lord God, we know that the best is yet to come for the United States of America. And we believe that in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise for that, church? God is good. I want to encourage you that if you have not gotten one of these 21 Days of Prayer uh, pamphlets, please pick one up or you can go to our website and get one. And then also, uh, again, if you want to read through the Bible in 365 days, there is this out there in the lobby that you can take as well. And we want to encourage you to do that. Well, today we continue in our series on part three of talking about not only um, our values, our vision, but our mission as a church. And today I want to talk to you about standards and behaviors. I want to talk to you about standards and behaviors, not just for us as a church or as leaders, but what some of these standards and these principles, I believe that, uh, and behaviors, God wants you to instill in your life, in your home, where you work, um, and, and, or where you go to school, or wherever it may be this morning. So I don't want you to just think in terms of what I'm talking about for us as leaders of the church, what our standards are, or what your behavior should be, or what our behavior should be for the church. And those things are important, but I think there's some tools, and there's some principles here that you can learn for your own personal life today as we go through this journey together. Now last week, if you were with us, or if you're just join us today or or if you're online with us today we learned that values are a guiding principle we learned about values last week and 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 guiding they're guiding principles by which we should live by and we learned that values communicate what's important to us we learned that values uh, show how they influence our behavior. They, uh, values assist us in what we say yes to and what we say no to in life and and then of course values enhance our credibility and we talked about the four, four five, the, we talked about the five core values of our church, and we talked about five key principles, and that was worship. We talked about people. We talked about evangelism. We talked about discipleship, and we talked about servanthood. And you can go to our website to learn more about what of what our values are, or the next steps class that we have coming up at the end of this month for those that are new to our church and maybe want to learn more about the church and stuff like that. But of course, I want you to understand that. Have you ever noticed that churches are unique in what they do? Think about this for a moment. Churches are very unique in what they do and why they exist. Why is the church of Jesus Christ existing in the world today? I believe it's to assist. I believe it's to help people to grow in their faith 
by bringing the truth of God's word into their hearts and into their lives in the context of his love. Because if you think about it, his love never fails. His love casts away all fears and doubts. His love covers a multitude of sins. And the church of Jesus Christ is here to help those that are hurting. The church of Jesus Christ is here to help those that are down and out. The church is here to help people who have their act together or don't have their act together. And the church provides ministry programs that facilitate community and develop spiritual growth in the hearts and the minds of his people and people that are searching for truth. Now, how do we accomplish those, those things? How does the church of Jesus Christ accomplish those things? Well, I believe it's through their standards. It's through their standards. And, and for example, how many of you in this room have ever gone to Disneyland or Disney World? All right. Most people that live in Southern California have been to Disneyland. And those of you that maybe live in the Midwest or on the East Coast, maybe you've been to Disney World. And let me ask, let me tell you something. I always thought, what does MM stand for? And, and a lot of times we think it stands for Mickey Mouse. I think it stands for making money, amen? You know, because, I mean, no wonder that that mouse is always smiling because he's got money coming out of his ears. And if you think about it, if you've been to Disneyland or you've been to Disney World, they have standards. They have standards by which they live by as a business, as a for-profit corporation. And it's through these standards that you can see the culture by which they live by that is consistent in how they run that business. It's crazy how packed Disneyland is and you're paying an arm and a leg more than just a prime rib to go to make everyone happy. Think about that for a moment. And their commitment to providing the best possible service experience for those who are on the receiving end of their products and their services. And it is the culture of Disneyland that supports those standards of excellence. I mean, if you've ever been to Disneyland, you can't throw trash on the floor without Goofy coming and sweeping it up or somebody. I mean, that place is spick and span. It's spotless and so forth. And their employees understand their pivotal role that they play in providing that service and support. But as the church of Jesus Christ, let me just say something this morning. We are not into the Mickey Mouse business. No pun intended. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Mickey Mouse or anything like that. But rather, I want you to understand this morning that as the, as the church of Jesus Christ, look at your hands for a minute. Look at your feet for a minute. You and I are the hands and we are the feet of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we are, to, we are called to be salt. How many of you like to put salt on your food that sometimes doesn't have a, the flavor it needs and you just dump the whole thing out or something like that? I don't know, but we all love salt because salt adds flavor. And not only are we called to be salt, not only to preserve and to add flavor into this world that we live in, but we're called to be light, to bring hope in a, in a hurting world and to help people to live in faith more than fear, especially in the days that we're living in. In reality, friends, if you're taking notes this morning, I want you to understand that as Christians, our ultimate desire is not to build up our our own kingdom. Our ultimate desire is rather to build up the kingdom of God. That is why we are here on this earth as followers of Jesus Christ, not only to have a relationship with God, but on, on, on this side of, of the platform is to be somebody that is Jesus with skin on and that is building up the kingdom of God. You see, the standards for the capital C church are critical. They're critical to the credibility and growth because when it comes down to it as a disciple of Christ and as a minister of the gospel, we need to remember on a daily basis that all that we are and all that we do is to bring glory and to bring honor and to bring praise to the name of Jesus. That is why we exist in all that we say and all that we do. Now, Walt Disney once said this, and I quote, listen to this. This is what he said. Whatever you do, do it well. Whatever you do, do it well. Do it so well that when people see you do it, they will want to come back and see you do it again. Think about that. And they will want to bring others and show them how well you do that. And that is why Disneyland is so huge. That is why it is so popular. And they have, they have um, amusement parks all over the world. And that is, that is a powerful statement if you think about it, friends. And that, is, that, that same quote that I just said should apply to us as Christians. Whatever you do, do it well. Whatever we are as a church, we should do it well. Do it so well that when people see you do it, they will want to come back. Well, it's not necessarily coming back to the church, but that they'll want to come to the cross and see you do it again. And they will want to bring others and show them how well you do what you do. There's something different about you. Why is it that in the middle of a pandemic, you seem to have more joy in your heart? You 
seem to have more peace in your spirit, whereas I don't, and I have to turn to a bottle, I have to turn to an addiction, and I don't have what you have. What is it that you have that I don't have? And you and I can say, it is not by might nor by our power, but it's by the spirit of the living God who's transformed my mind and has given me peace in the midst of all the circumstances, in the midst of all the trials, in the midst of all the tribulations, because I'm learning that he is my rock, he is my fortress, he is my strong tower in whom I trust. Yes, I have trials and I have tribulations just like you, but I don't have to lean on my own understandings, but in all my ways I can acknowledge him and he will direct my path. Amen. Somebody give him praise this morning. So there's four standards that I believe that we want to have as a church. As your pastor, as a, as a, as a, as a pastoral staff, as a, as a board and so forth, I believe these are four things that we want to strive for. These are the standards by which we want to live by. And I think these are things that you can do in your own personal life or in your family or in your business or in your career or whatever it is that you have. One of our standards is we want to be wise stewards over what God has given us. We want to be wise stewards over all that God has given us. Now, what is a biblical steward? A biblical steward is someone who utilizes and manages all, everyone say all, all of the resources that God provided in a manner that brings glory and honor to God and the, and the betterment of his creation. Now, if you think about it, how many times did Jesus talk about money in the Bible? Well, it's amazing how many times Jesus did talk about money. As a matter of fact, he discussed the topic of money more than he spoke on faith and on prayer. You would think it would be the opposite, that, that Jesus would talk more about prayer and faith, but he talked about money a lot of times. As a matter of fact, Jesus taught, typically taught in parables, and out of 40 parables, 11 of those were about money. 11 of, were the, of those were about uh, the way we should handle money, and, 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 and he used money as a way to teach us spiritual truths. And through the, throughout the gospel, Jesus uses money as a tool to reveal what our true priorities are. Let me tell you something, friends. If you want to know what's important to you, look at your bank statement and look at your credit card statement. And then I'll tell you what's important to you. Starbucks, in and out all these other things. There's nothing wrong with those things, but those are things, if you look at your credit card statement or your bank statement and you don't see anything for the kingdom of God, you are showing what's important to you in that moment. Now, God has entrusted City View Church and its leadership with profound gifts through the tithes and offerings to run this, this massive facility that God has given us and this, ch and this church. And if you think about it, here we are on 10 acres with a 78,000 square feet of facility. That's a big house. Think about that for a moment. 10 acres on 78,000 square feet facility. You look at your electric bill just for maybe 1,200 or, or 1,500 or 2,000 or whatever it may be. And you now multiply that by another 70,000. Think about that. And all that we have, uh, we want to use to help reach people. All that God has given us, we want to use to reach people with the good news of the gospel. We want to build people in their faith, and we want to make them influencers for the kingdom of God. And as a church, we want to strive to work with our approved budget. And how do we put together a budget? Our pastors and our directors begin to pray and process what they want to do for the next year and so forth. And so we put together a budget, and then... We might have to shave some things to, to be realistic of what we think we're going to be and where we're going to go in the year to come and so forth. And then the board approves that budget. And I'm thankful that in seven years that I've been the pastor of this church, there's only been one year that we've ended in the red. It was significantly in the red, but the next year we had almost a $400,000 turnaround from going in the red that much to in the black. And the reason why is because we want to be wise stewards of what God has entrusted us. And what God's entrusted us to do with those things. And we will continually take care of our facility. We want to upgrade it by developing it for future growth. But our desire is that all that we do with the money that God has entrusted, entrusted us is we want to please him. We want to please the Lord. And we want to grow his church. And we want to expand his kingdom. I love what the Bible says in Matthew 25, 21. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. And I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That's what I hope that I'll, I'll hear in heaven someday when I pass this earth. Or I hope that when you pass this earth, that we'll be able to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, it's not just about being wise stewards to what God's given us. But I believe another standard is we want to give God our very best on how we minister. 
We want to give God our very best in how we minister. You see, here at City View, people minister as volunteers to children from the nursery all the way up to fifth grade. We have volunteers that help out in the youth ministry from sixth grade to twelfth grade. We have young adults from 18 to 25. Then we have adult ministries. Then we have senior adult ministries. You can minister as a volunteer through outreaches like you just heard of, of what um, Joey's got going on. There's events that we do here at this church. There's activities. There's community luncheons where people help make those luncheons or prepare the the, the fellowship center, there's growth tracks, there's next steps lunches, there's classes on Thursdays, there's classes on, on Sunday mornings, and we have teachers for those classes, assistant teachers or volunteers with the children or the youth or the, uh, the programs that we have. We, we minister as volunteers in this church by some people make quilts for people people who have cancer, we have ushers and greeters, we have people that volunteer for Vacation Bible School, Royal Family Kids Camp, camps for youth and kids, conventions, sometimes we open up our facility for concerts where we've had Torrin Wells and, and, and Ren Collective and we've had uh, 1,300 people here where well, we need volunteers to help them, welcome them into our church and so forth as we open up the facility. Of course, there's assistance and volunteers in the worship area by people singing and playing an instrument, serving in the tech area by doing sound lighting and PowerPoint, running video cameras, taking pictures with, with regular cameras. And, and we minister by serving at the check-in station for the kids when they come in, setting up or tearing down for Christmas decorations or events or outreaches or, or classes. We have props that we make for certain times of the year where people can take pictures with for Easter or for Father's Day or Mother's Day. We serve in area, areas like we did the, the food boxes to our community during the pandemic or the treasure bags on the third Saturday of the month with Joey. And the list goes on and on and on what this church offers you, this city, and this community in English, in Spanish, in Amatic, and in Oromo. Think about that for a minute. And we want to do what we do, and we want to give God our very best. But when it comes to how we minister, we need to remember that God desires that all we present to him is of our highest value. It's of our highest value. That is why we strive to do it in a way that shows dedication we strive for a way to show passion and energy and, and enthusiasm and high quality fitting for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. And if you think about it, all of, 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 all of us should give God our very best when we volunteer. Every single one of us. Why? Because God gave us his very best in his only son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross so that we might live. And everything we attempt to do as a church or anything you attempt to do for your family or for your parents or in your chores or, or at your school or where you work or whatever it may be. I think here's the question we need to ask at the end of the day. Have I given you God my very best? Have I given you, God, my very best to my spouse? Have I given you, God, every, uh, my best to my children? Have I given you, God, my best when I got involved in that ministry? God, have I given you my best when I, when, I, when, I, when I went to school today or whatever it may be? God, have I given you my very best? We don't ask that question. Matter of fact, we sometimes ask God, well, what have you done for me lately? But I think if, if we're honest this morning, we, we need to start asking that question every night before we put our, our head on that pillow. God, did I give, you, did I give my very best for for your glory and your honor at, my, at, where, at where I work. And you'll look back and you'll say, man, you know what? I, I should have done this or I should have done that. And, and you know what? Do it the next day. Here's some questions you could ask yourself. Did I come prepared? Did I arrive early or was I the last one to leave? Did I, did I leave the place better than I found it? Did I make the people who came feel like they were the most important person in the world? Maybe that's questions you ask yourself if you're an usher or greeter or whatever it may be. But did I touch someone with the love of God? Did I make someone feel welcomed? In all that we do, we want to give God our very best. How many of you in this room have ever used a paper plate to eat? Why is it that we love paper plates? Because they're disposable. We don't have to wash dishes. It's an easy come, easy go thing. But I believe that sometimes in the church, we have a paper plate mentality. When what we need to do is we need to have a fine china mentality. And think about it, when, when, when you get your fine china out, you don't just walk around with it like a paper plate. You, you hold it like it's a precious possession. And I think every single one of us in this room need to think, Lord, when it comes to serving, when it comes to giving you my very best, is my mentality paper plate or is it fine china? Because we want to give God our very best as a church. I love what it says in Colossians 17, 23 through 24. It says, whatever you do, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for people, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So let me ask you this. 
If you're serving in this church and there's someone overseeing you as your supervisor, your superior, or whatever it may be, I want you to understand that, yes, there's differences of opinion in all that, but the bottom line is this, you're serving the Lord. You're serving the Lord wherever you, God has called you to. Another standard by which we want to strive for as a church is to be effective in what we do. We want to be effective in what we do. Now, I'm going to give you three names this morning, and some of you will know those names, and some of you won't know those names from Adam. How many of you in this room have ever heard of Baron Wiley? Not a hand has been raised. How many of you in this room have ever heard of Walter Lobato? Not a hand has been raised. How many of you ever heard of a, name, of a guy named Bill Zonis? Some of you, your hands are raised. Let me tell you something about Baron Wiley, Walter Lobato, and Bill Zonis. Baron Wiley was a youth leader at Trinity Church. And I met him for the first time at a camp. He was my youth counselor. And I remember meeting him for the first time, and I thought, you know, I had such a cold heart towards God. I hated going to church. I didn't want nothing to do with the youth ministry. I didn't even want to go to that camp. But this guy had such a joy in his heart, and he was the funniest guy that I had ever met in my life. But he loved Jesus. He loved Jesus, and he was my counselor. And God used Baron Wiley to, traject, to literally transform me in the way that I looked at Christianity. And from that point on, I decided to get involved in the youth ministry of the church that I was in. Eventually, I felt God calling me not to be a lawyer, but to be involved in ministry and so forth. Could you imagine if Baron Wiley would have said to himself, you know what, I, I just don't feel like I want to be a youth leader anymore. Then I don't even know if I'd be here. Some of you don't even know who Walter Lobato is, but he was an elder man in Fremont First Assembly, and, and I was an intern at the church. And I remember one time he said, I want to take you out to lunch. And I went to lunch with him, and, and he began to share about the history of being at this wonderful church and so forth. And, 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 and he began to say some encouraging things to me, but he said, I, I got one thing I want to talk to you about. And I said, what is it, Walter? He says, the way you dress. And I thought, oh, man, here he goes, older man. He's going to beat this young boy up and all this other stuff. But he didn't do that. He said this to me. He said, Troy, I see potential in you. I see that God's going to use you for his glory and his honor just as an intern and still going to Bible college. And he gave me an envelope. And I opened up that envelope, and you know what it was? It was a check, it was, it was a gift certificate. They, don't, they didn't have gift cards back then, or, or credit plastic cards. But it was, a, it was an envelope to Men's Warehouse for $300. And he said, I want to invest in your life. I want you to buy a suit. Walter Lovato is no longer on this earth. The same thing with Bill Zonis. First time I met Bill, it was after the... the um, the town hall meeting when I was a candidate for this church, he was the first person to meet me. And if you know Bill, he's, he's the first person that will always meet you. I know people that have come to this church because of Bill Zonis. And Bill was the type of guy that he always had a, a coupon in his, in his pocket to invite you to the men's breakfast. Or he would pat you on the back and he'd make you go 15 feet in the air or whatever it may have been. He just was a loving guy, but he was effective in what he did. He was effective in what he did for me as a spiritual father and so forth. And you see, friends, all those names that I mentioned, they had one thing in common. You know what the one thing in common they had? They were effective. They were effective at who they were. They weren't trying to be someone else. They just were being who God called them to be in the gifts that he had given them, in the abilities that he had given them, and so forth. And God designed the church to fulfill his purpose on this earth. God designed this, the church of Jesus Christ to achieve victory for his kingdom. And we will value effort. We'll never be satisfied with being ineffective. And we will be faithful, but we'll strive for faithful. We'll, we'll be faithful, but we want to strive for fruitfulness. That is why we will make sure to align our efforts to carry out our values successfully for the glory and the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love what it says in 1 Corinthians 9:24. Do you know that in a race all runners run, but no one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Baron Riley. Walter Lobato and Bill Zonis were the type of men that ran to get the prize. And the prize was people. And that's what we're called to do. We want to be effective in making disciples for Christ as, as we embrace biblical relevance in what we teach and preach as a church. We want to challenge people to be effective ambassadors who promote faith around the world by praying and supporting our missionaries. And, 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 and yes, you can change your world where he has placed you. So let's run the race with effectiveness. Let's run the race with confidence. Let's run the race with perseverance, with enthusiasm, but most importantly, his anointing. Because when we have those things, one of the things we need to remember is that the the Lord our God is with us in that process. Amen. And finally, the fourth standard we strive for as a church is to be authentic in who we are. 
transparent. We, we may not have it all together at times. Let me tell you why. We're imperfect people. We don't have it all together. But by his, by his grace that we continually move forward at the speed of purpose to the things that God has called us to for such a time as this. And as God's people, he's called us to be different from this world. He's called us to be different from this world, but in the process of being unique, we want to be transparent in who we are. We want to be transparent in who we are. Even though our culture and our lives are constantly changing, we desire to discover together what it means to love and follow Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 through 5 and 8 says this, We speak as people approved by God to be trusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please people, but God. Test our hearts. You know we never use flattery. I love this. Nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We loved you so much that we delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well because you have become so dear to us. One of the things I love about that scripture that I just read was, nor did we put on a mask. You know, we come to church and we play Halloween every day, every Sunday sometimes. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. But inside we're hurting. We don't want to be a burden to people or we don't want to bother them or any, anything like that. But I love the transparency. Nor did we put on a mask to cover up. We all got issues. You know, we're all worried if we've been tested positive for COVID. I think we need to be more worried about if we've been tested positive for SIN, for sin. For sin. Because sin is what literally separates us from, from, from having that relationship with God because he's such a holy God. And, and now, it's one thing to have standards that we should live by. I think standards are important, but it's another thing when it comes to the kind of culture we want to create as a church, because the culture of a church is determined in how we behave. How we behave, and our behaviors have a way to make us go forward. Just think about that. Your behaviors, my behaviors have a way to make a relationship go forward, or become stagnant, or, or unfortunately, it could even destroy a relationship. It can even destroy a church if someone's not careful. Cultural behaviors are created by what we do, not necessarily by what we say. How many of you have ever heard the saying, action speaks louder than words? A lot of us have heard that before. And our behaviors as a church should result in seeing people grow in the Lord and in the power of his might. Cultural behaviors are built over time through, you got to be committed, you got you to go through the hard work to make those things happen, but it's so important that you lean on the power of the Holy Spirit through that process, and our behaviors as the people of God should not be focused on what we want, because that's what we live. We live in a culture who wants what I want, what I need, and so forth, but rather, as the people of God, our, our, our behavior should not be focused on what we want, but rather, they should be focused on what God is calling us to do. And what he is wanting us to, and where he is wanting us to go, and what he's called us to do. Now, yes, God is bringing an influx of new people to this church, and many of you that have been a part of this church for a long time, you'll see people and you'll look and you're like, oh, yeah, they're new. I've never seen them there. I've never seen that. So God is bringing an influx of new people along with those who have been a part of this church for some time. And we want to create a culture of, a culture of, of behavior that defies what is ordinary. We want to create a culture that is willing to take a risk. We want to create a culture that is marked by personal discipline and a heart that resonates God's heart and God's spirit. And we want to create a culture of love and and servanthood that prefers others over themselves and their desires. And a lot of times you can see if it's more about what you want and when you need on how you react instead of respond. Whether it's in something that the church is doing or something this is happening in your own personal life or whatever it may be. But if we don't build cultural behaviors within our church, then we can't build anything that will last forever. So here are the four cultural behaviors that we should live by as a church. The first one is this, is to protect. Everyone say protect. To protect God's church through unity. Now, when I go to bed at night, I usually try to do this. I'm not perfect. Or sometimes Therese will ask me, did you lock all the doors? But what I try to do is I try to go through the side garage, the slider by the kitchen, the front door, and make sure that those doors are locked, including our slider in our master. Why do I lock my doors? Because I want to protect that which is valuable to me, and that is my family and our pets and so forth. I have a responsibility to protect my family. You have a responsibility to do the same thing. And we have a responsibility, if we call City View our church, to protect the unity in that. Think about that, friends, for a moment. You know, God has called us to do those things. And and if you think about it, how do we protect the unity of the church? By focusing on what we have in Christ Jesus. 
What do we have together in Christ Jesus? We're going to talk about that in a minute. But here's what happens. Another thing that we can do to protect the unity of the church is to truly love one another as Christ loves the church. How do we protect the unity of a church? By refusing to get on the gossip train or letting any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths or things that are negative, critical, manipulative, controlling, and not helpful in building others up. How do we protect the unity of the church? By praying and, and, and following those who are in authority over you as your shepherds because ultimately we will have to give an account for everything that we have done in that time where God has placed us. And unity in the body of Christ is so important Listen to me this morning, friends. I understand that there's a lot of differences. You say tomato, I say tomato. You know, there's all sorts of things that we have. And there's a lot of differences in a lot of things. But it's from those things that there can be a lot of division in a church. I've heard of churches that have, have, have split over the color of carpet. Over the color of pews, or to have pews or not to have pews. The colors of the walls. I've heard of churches that have gone through division because a church wants hymns and no hymns. They, they want an organ and don't want an organ. They want traditional music and they want modern music. They want expository preaching. No, they want exegetical teaching. And the list goes on and on and on. And can I be honest with you as a pastor of 30 years? This has to be the most intense time in the history of the church when it has come to this pandemic. It really has. You've got people that are saying, like I've never seen before, you got to vax, no vax. You got to have a mask, you no, no mask. You got to meet to live, you, you need to meet live. No, you don't need to meet live. You need to socially distance. No, you don't need to socially distance. And then the political world, it even gets worse. No, I'm for Trump. No, I'm for Biden. No, I'm all about the Democrat Party. And no, I'm all about the Republican Party. I'm all about capitalism. I'm all about socialism. I'm all about BLM. I'm not about, about BLM. I'm for woke. I'm not for woke. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And what's happening in the church of Jesus Christ is there is a division that is happening in the hearts and the minds of people today in, in the situations that we're living in today. And it breaks the heart of God. But here's the real thing that we need to remember. In all the things that I listed, whether it was inside the church, whether it was with the pandemic or whether it was politics or whatever it may have been, social justice, and all those things, I want you to understand this morning, those things are temporal. They're temporal. But I want us to understand what helps us to protect the unity of a church is to focus on that which is eternal. That which is eternal in Jesus Christ. We need to focus on what is eternal. And what is eternal? That our lives are lives that are living in repentance. What is eternal? That God's love for us is unconditional. What is eternal? That heaven is our home. What is eternal? That resentment is something we need to avoid. What is eternal? That the church is a place where we celebrate in community and we grow from God's word and we worship Jesus for who he is. There's not a person in this room that wouldn't say, I don't agree with that, Pastor. Every single one of you would say, Pastor, absolutely, that is right. And why do I say that? Because that is eternal and that has to be our focus. That has to be our focus. More than all the things that are surrounding us, may they become shadows in the likes of his presence. We need to love those who are lost. I think there's not a person in this room that wouldn't disagree with that. I think we need to love those that don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't think there's a person in this room that wouldn't agree with that. We need to make sure that, our, that the people in our city hear more about the love of God in our hearts than the hate we have for other people. Did you hear what I said? We need to make sure that the people in our city hear more about the love of God in our hearts than the hate we have for other people. The bottom line is this, friends. The key to remain in unity is when we choose daily that we are more interested in God's kingdom than in ours. That's really what it comes down to. And that's how we protect the unity of the church. I love what it says in Romans 15.5. It says, live in complete harmony with each other with the attitude of Christ towards one another. That's what it's all about. Secondly, as a church, we, we, we should all desire to share in the responsibility of growing the church. Of growing the church. How do we grow a church? We become responsible. We pray for its growth spiritually, numerically, and financially. We come to it. We watch it online. Or, or we invite people to come and visit the church. We make everyone feel welcome who attends here. We develop friendships with one another through community. And as your pastor, let me just say this. I thank God. For each and every single one of you. I thank God that you came today. That you're here physically. That excites me in my spirit. There's no doubt about that. And not only do I thank God for you and, and what you do. But I pray that God will minister to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And remind you daily that he who began a good work in you will be faithful. Everyone say faithful. He will be faithful to complete it in you. 
That's what it's all about. I love what it says in Romans 15, 7. So warmly welcome each other into the church just as Christ has warmly welcomed you. Then God will be glorified. I love what it says in Luke 14, 23. Go out into the country and urge anyone you find to come in so that my house will be full. The third behavior and posture that we should have is to serve in the ministries of God's church. How do we serve in the ministries of God's church? Maybe some of you, you heard Joey's heart and you're like, you have a passion for the military. Or maybe you've been in the, the military and you know what that's like. And, and, and maybe there's gifts that God has given you or there's abilities God's given you or talents that God has given you or things that you love to do for the ministry that the Lord is calling you to get involved in. Those are ways that you serve the church. Something sparks your heart. Something sparks your spirit and says, I need to get involved in that. I need to participate. I can help out once a month in the nursery. I love kids. I love babies or whatever it may be. There's all sorts of things that you can think to. 1 Peter 4.10 says, serve one another with the particular gifts God has given each of you. God has given every single one of you a gift. He's given you abilities. He's given you a personality. He's given you things that you love to do that are completely different than mine. And he wants you to serve. He's giving us that opportunity to serve one another with the particular gifts that God has given each of you. Maybe your gift is intercession. Then pray. I mean, God bless her. She's no longer here, Claire Mora. But I'll tell you, I used to, I used to talk to, to Mike and watch him football or bat, baseball or whatever it may be, and it's, it's his favorite team or something like that. I would text him, and I'd say, you better text Claire, you know, because uh, you need some intercession for your football team right now. They're on the struggle bus. Well, Claire's no longer here. I can't text Mike and say, hey, you need to text so-and-so because you know they have a direct line with the Lord and they're an intercessor. I mean, one person I know is Pam Castile. She's like that. She's a pa Patrick Coran and, and the intercessors in our church. Man, those are people that will storm the gates of hell for you. They're intercessors. That's their gift. That's their peculiar gift. And there's more gifts that they have than just praying. And we all have something. And then finally, our behavior should be to support the testimony of God's church. And this testimony has been going on for 100 years as of this year. And how do we support the testimony of this church? By attending faithfully. Yes, there's a lot to do in San Diego. And I don't expect you to be here 52 Sundays a year. You've got vacations. You get ill, all those. But, but be faithful. Choose to live a godly life by conducting ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. And develop and maintain a habit of giving faithfully and regularly. Faithfully and regularly. Hebrews 10, 25 says this. Let us not give up meeting together unless there's a pandemic. It doesn't say that. It says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And I understand some people can't physically make it. I get that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that because they're a part of this church through online. They're the digital church. That's okay. That's, that's fine. But there's something about being together, Eva. There's something about an embrace. There's something about being able to look at you face to face. And I can't do that through a TV screen. I can only do it now in this place. And I want to encourage you, church, to support the testimony of God's church. Whether this is your church or not, or you're just visiting where it may be, I think there's application to those four behaviors that all of us should have. We should all be protecting. We should all be responsible. We should all be serving, and we should all be supporting the local mission of God's church for such a time as this. Every head is bowed and eyes are closed. What is the Lord calling you to do more for Him this year? Just think about that. Maybe it's to protect the unity of the church and what you say and do. Maybe it's to share in the responsibility of the church to help it grow, to invite people, to make people feel loved and welcomed and get to know them. Maybe it's in serving in some form or fashion the ministries or outreaches or participate in a connect class that the church offers on a Thursday night or a Sunday morning. Or maybe it's to support the testimony of the church by, by choosing that you want to live a godly life and you want to attend as faithfully as you can and you want to give regularly as you can because of the blessings the Lord has given you. Maybe it's one of those areas that the Lord is challenging you. Maybe it's two of those areas. Maybe it's three of those areas. Maybe it's four of those areas. I don't know. But whatever it is, it takes time to, to develop a habit, good or bad. It takes about two to three weeks to form a, a behavior. 
And I want to encourage you that whatever it is that the Lord is challenging you to do, do it as unto the Lord and not as unto man. Maybe you need to ask someone for forgiveness. Maybe you need to humble yourself. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but I believe that the Holy Spirit right now is talking to you, not to hurt you, but to help you. Because healed people will help people, but hurt people will always hurt people. And maybe what the Holy Spirit wants to do right now is just begin to let that, that healing balm of Gilead just touch your, your heart, touch your mind. Maybe you've been hurt by leaders. Maybe you've been hurt by a church who took advantage of the finances. I don't know what it may be, but there's hurt. But I believe that God can make all things new. I believe that God can make crooked ways straight. I believe that God can take barren places and make them fruitful. I believe that God can take places that are dry and make them swell, swell like a living river, like live with, with living waters. Because we serve a God of the impossible. Maybe you want to give your life to Christ for the first time or, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ because your standards of your, or, or your behaviors, as you've realized this morning, they don't even line up with the Word of God. And maybe today is the day of salvation. Maybe today is the day of rededication. But there's a four-letter word that I believe God wants to instill in every heart more than the four-letter word that's been wrapped around our culture today. And it's the word hope. H-O-P-E. I believe God wants to replace your fear with hope because God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and what the, what our world needs more than ever before today is 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 hope and so today father instill in your hearts and your lives of your people if you're able to would you stand with me this moment as we re respond to God in worship and we reflect on the message this morning and maybe there's something that the Lord is tugging at your heart to do Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to, to take it to another level this year. So, Father, I pray for my friends this morning. Whatever decisions they're making will affect the destiny that you have for their tomorrows. And so, Father, today, do what only you can do. For the individuals who say, Lord, I, I want my behavior to be one of protection that brings unity. I want my behavior to be one of responsibility that helps things grow. I want my behavior to be one that is serving and, and, and serving God's interests in the lives of others. I want my responsibility to be one of supporting the testimony of what you have done in this church faithfully for a hundred years and beyond. Because this is your church, Lord. It's not mine. It's yours. It's not ours. It's yours. And so, Father, we want to be faithful in what you've called us to do. And so, Lord, after this day is over, let our actions speak louder than our words. And for those in this room, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord or give your life to the Lord for the first time, just where you're at, just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on that cross. You rose from the grave. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. Friend, if you said that prayer, you've made the greatest decision of your life. But as we worship the Lord, maybe there's some repentance you need to do. Maybe there's some things that the Lord is, is challenging you to do or wanting you to do. Be obedient to the Spirit of God because I believe this is going to be one of the greatest years in the life of you and in this church because it's His and it all belongs to Him. So, Father, as we worship you this morning, do what only you can do through the corridor of our hearts and our minds and the pews as, as you, your Holy Spirit just begins to touch your people and begins to bring healing and restoration as we repent. And we ask you to forgive us, Lord God, because it's not about us. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. So, Lord, if there's areas of our heart that need to change, do what you can do during this time as we worship you in spirit and in truth, in reality and love, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the church. Our God, he lives forever. He reigns in power and love let earth bow down before him for he is exalted
forever, Yahweh, Yahweh, our hope is God Almighty, His love is greater than all, lift high the God of sing that one more time. Forever and ever Father, you're worthy. He shall reign Whatever you're walking he through, shall he reigns. thankful for Jesus, could you give him a shout? Come on, if he's been good to you, come on. Well, hey, we're so excited that you're here. You go ahead and have a seat real quick. My name is Tim, and I get to be the privileged honor of being the next-gen pastor here, and man, we're so excited that you have joined us today. 
Um, if you are new, we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hang out with you. So on the screen is a number and just text that number and we will get that out to you. There's also a connect card on the seat back in front of you uh, to where you can just fill that out and then you can place it in our offering boxes on your way out. Connect with us, do life with us. Don't do life alone, okay? This is why we're here. We get to have the honor of serving you and doing life with you guys. So connect there. If you uh, came prepared to give today, there's also in the seat back the offering envelopes that you can place in the box in the back as well. You can also text, you can mail in, all the different stuff, that ways you can give. You can go online to our website as well. And we'd love to be able to help partner with you. And you can partner with us in making a difference so more people can hear the gospel. I don't know about you, but today's message was so encouraging about what our vision is for this church and what this house is going to be doing for our community. And it only happens if you do it with us. Because with our staff, as great as our staff is, we can't do it all. That's why we need you. That's why we need your help to serve in different areas. And if you want to serve, again, you can text that number two or you can find us or we'll find you. We'll just tap and be like, hey, you want to do this? And then you say yes or no and serve with us. But it's a lot of fun. Hey, we want to let you know a few things. We are in the middle of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Some of y'all are feeling really good. Some of you are like, Jesus, help me. But it's cool because that's what he does. And so we're continuing on that. You have plenty of time to jump in and start with us. Go to our website at cityviewsd.com slash events. You can find out all the PDFs as far as what to read in our year of the Bible reading, as well as what we're praying for each and every day on our social media. And you can follow along with that. Uh, next Sunday, January 23rd, we have our next steps lunch. So if you've been here for a while, or if you're new and you're like, you know what? I haven't met the entire team. I don't really know fully a whole bunch of stuff about this church. Perfect. Come join us. You'll get to meet the team. You'll hear the heart behind the church and behind pastor and what all of that looks like. And that gives us plenty of time to just sit with you, learn about you, you learn about us because that's what the body of Christ does, right? So join us. It's absolutely free. We got lunch coming your way. It'll be a blast. As, as well as Sunday classes are back. So we had our first kickoff of the year today. At 8.45, we have our classes for kids, adults, and youth. And let me tell you something. There's a class in particular, not mine, but they're going in the book of Colossians. And man, it is going to be a great class. So 8.45, Sunday mornings, you get to be a part of growing your faith deeper and deeper before even coming into the service. That's what's awesome. And we want you guys to be a part of that. So let me pray over you and you guys will be officially dismissed. Father, we thank you for this church. God, we thank you for your people. Father, I pray that you go before them this week. Whatever they're facing, whatever they're going through, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit guides them and brings peace that surpasses all understanding. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you, church. You are officially dismissed. Thank you.